All right, so I just brought home a couple new products from the studio. I haven't used them before, um, but what intrigued me about them is that they are permanent ink, and I am always looking for something to use in my layering, so I thought, well, why not give this a try? So I'm gonna open a couple of the colors. I've got like purple, which is called anemone, and um, a turquoise and tomato red and there's an opaline and a silver and a gold. I mean, there's tons of colors. This is just the ones that I grabbed. Of course, I grabbed turquoise. And they come in these little glass bottles. They remind me of something like a Liquitex ink. Um, but I don't know if what intrinsically makes them different. So I have a page here in a journal that is just kind of like a junky journal that I um, do random stuff in. And it's a gessoed page. And on top of this side is like a UT, an ultra thick embossed. Um, stamp and on this side I think it was a gel medium thing I was setting up resist um, actually when I was doing the design memory craft videos so I'm gonna just kind of play around and create some backgrounds actually why don't I start on a plain one first do I have a plain one yeah so um, they have these droppers so you can see that it's just um, a glass hear it and you can drop it on no I probably should start over here you know, just like ink, like India ink, um, as you wish, you know, dropping it in splatters. Um, what I think is different between even um, the Liquitex ink and apparently this is that if I were to drop India ink, it kind of splatters. Whatever the molecular structure is, it kind of splays. So um, this falls in like a concentric circle. And clearly you could take a brush, mine's a dirty brush with some turquoise on it, but you'll get the point. There's a little water on it. You can take it and paint with it. It's like a really thin ink, almost like a watercolor, but again, it's going to dry permanently. So you can get like a watercolory effect with this and a permanent dry. Um, but my one thing that I really want to try is putting it into wet. So I want to kind of spray this page down and hopefully I have a cleaner brush. This one might be clean. And I'm just going to brush the page so it's fully kind of covered in water. And this is also a gessoed page. If it wasn't just that it would be very porous and it would be soaking all this in, I want it to kind of sit on top. And I'm going to take that same color, instead of dropping it on the dry one where it made a splatter, like that, it's going to, it should react differently. Probably should suck some color up in there. Nice. Which, you know, me, I'm about color and I like it to move and all kinds of things. So that's going on there and I figure... Pour, how about I pour the ink all over and on my hands? Get some kind of reaction here. Let's see if I can pick it up from the table where I just now I'm in a blue table. Maybe I should just do this at my fingers because it's all over my hands. By the way, this is not the way the demo was supposed to go. Um, but I guess in keeping with the real life action, that's how the demo goes. So I'm liking that, and I'm thinking maybe get it to move a little bit more as I clean off the blue. Let's really, did I need to spill the whole thing? Yes, I did. Oh, loving that, loving that. Now I'm wasting all this. Oh, I should totally get another journal and wipe that up, shouldn't I? Can you see that splooge over here? I have to show you, because that's just, really, did I need to spill half the bottle on the table? So instead of just throwing that out, I am going to get one of my junk journals, which I just keep all kinds of smush and stuff in. And I'm going to take that and put it in here. Kill two birds, one stone, one book. There, now I have that in there for later. And um, so back to this, we've kind of got some movement there. If I spray a little bit more water, I'll probably get it to move a little bit more. And you can see it's kind of drying. So that's actually nice. If this were watercolor, all of that would be reconstituting. It's not. Oh, I think I might just need to drip that over there. I think I just have to. I can't help myself. Oh, I just can't help myself. Right? Totally love that. It's like little sperm swimming. All right, so... 
I'm going to wet this one more time just to make sure it's wet enough. And I'm thinking maybe just taking some of the silver. Now, typically, I usually say metallics react differently than regular um, colors, but I don't know about this, so we're going to find out. And you might be looking at going, you're just making a mess. To me, I'm making a background, so um, this is how I kind of experiment and play with new products. I just want to see how they're going to react with water. Um, do they dry? Do they not dry? Will they work on top of other media. So now I'm just kind of putting some of that silver in there. I also have gold. Can be a little burl eyes and silver and gold. Wrong season. All right, so I will say that the other one splayed a lot differently than the metallic. So let me just put some of that. Ooh, ooh, look at that, look at that. It kind of breaks up. That's cool too. Part of mixed media is that you learn how to use these medias with each other, how they react, um, and I guess that's part of the process for me too. So get some drippage there, change the direction, I'm trying to get some of that white space full. Probably have to drip some of that that way because that made me so happy the first time. That's just, look at that. Can you see, I have to zoom in on that. I don't know where my clicker is. Okay, let me zoom in on that. So that's really cool. Can you see how that kind of marbled into that? Loving that. Now I have, I do have white opalescent. I think I might have to put a little bit more of this anemone. I don't even know if I'm saying that right. I even like the contrast of the blended color with the solid drop. I was trying to get three because, you know, I need odd numbers. Ooh, I like that. And I don't know, I think I might let that dry and we'll come back and we'll do some a little bit of stamping on top of that. So I'm drying this and I start moving the book because there's puddles. So what's cool is that the color that's dripping through the solid pieces that I had there is kind of marbling as well. So I just can't stop myself, you know. I like to make a mess and I like to drip things. So, ooh, wow. I know that you're looking at it, it's color and it's just making drips. Makes me happy. Okay, I'm going to dry that, then I'll be back. All right, so as I'm doing this, my brain is going... Well, does it look any different than acrylic? So that's when I have to go to my acrylics and let's pull out some similar colors. So this is cobalt turquoise, which is probably closest to that. And permanent violet dark will probably be close to that. And I also have some silver high flow. So I know I have some stuff over here. So we'll just kind of see, pretend that's dry. If it looks similar, at least the results look similar to what we have just done over here, but with fluid. And you can see that's dry, so it doesn't reconstitute. This one is not dry. All right, so let's drop. First, I dropped the cobalt turquoise. So this is the fluid acrylic. So it does do something similar, but not quite as fluid. So that one splayed a little bit nicer. This has more of a thicker center. Um, I probably can spray it out but then I kind of lose the potency. That's still nice and potent. I'm just talking out loud, by the way. So let's try to add a little bit permanent violet. Well, that's a more transparent color, so that does a whole lot nicer. And then let's take the high, the iridescent silver. Have I used it yet? It might be brand new. Yep, that'll stop you every time. Come on. Oops, I may have just pushed it into the bottle. All right, so let's just put some of that high flow in there, which is clearly more fluid than the fluid. Might need to shake it because it's coming out like gray. Let's see. All right. So now, what the difference is, in my opinion, is because this paint, even though it splays nice, 
it's still a little bit more solid Amedia. So this one, it kind of looks like a watercolor. So it reacts more like a watercolor and dries permanent, whereas a watercolor would not dry permanent. And this, clearly an acrylic paint, because it's a fluid acrylic, it'll splay, but you have to kind of force it to move. And then when we drip it, you end up with a more of a mess. This is where you could potentially get mud. Okay, so this is the reaction of both of them. This one, you have to spray it so much in order to get it to move that it kind of, it, it becomes too loose. Where this one, you can still get it to move. I could kept spraying it to get it looser, but it still maintains that line. So I'm gonna let both of these dry. And then I'm gonna go back to that page where I had that embossed um, image. I'm gonna see if it resists just like acrylic paint would. Okay, so it's dry. So like I said, this is what happens to this media when you add water. And I think actually I am added more water to this one than this one. So this one's just kind of great effect. It's not like it's not beautiful, but this is a little bit more controllable. All right, so I wanna see, I wanna go back to this page and I am gonna add some of the water again. Of course, my brush is dirty, so pretend it's not. And see what happens when I drip that ink. Maybe I'll try to do half with paint and try to do the other half with the ink. So I'll do the left side with the ink and then the right side with the paint. So I'll drop, let's do one, Two, three, and let's do. to myself now. All right, so this experiment, yes, the color goes on um, way more vibrant with the acrylic paint, but yet I still get these big blobs and I have to almost spray the color to nothing to get rid of them, which, you know, could be an application that you like, whereas this will turn more to a paint when you spray it than that one. Oh, 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 watch that. Um, so what I'm hoping is that Basically, acrylic paint will do a resist on top of UT, meaning once it's dry, I can take a baby wipe and wipe it off and it will come off. So if you see these areas here, they should come clean again. And I really probably should try to get the color in between because then you'll see a better um, resist. Let me put a little bit of this here and a little bit of that there. And then I'll have it fully saturated with color. And my finger and spread it there and then if it see if it wipes off of the UT like acrylic because now acrylic is permanent but it still resists so that's our test next all right I'm gonna let that dry now that I've spread that color oh I missed a spot and uh, I'm just making a hot mess now I'm gonna let that dry. Because I simply have no patience and I can't wait for paint to dry, I have a couple wet spots. I'm just gonna take a roll of paper towels and kind of go over them. It'll leave kind of holes or pock marks where the paint is, but I'm okay with that. Um, I also can't take a heat gun to this because if I take a heat gun to dry the paint, it could actually remelt the UT underneath and then the color could sink into it and then be permanent. So the idea being that this is um, going to resist, I don't want that color to sink into it. So I have a wet baby wipe here. If this paint is truly permanent, then it will um, not come off unless it's wet in certain spots. Um, but I know the acrylic paint should come right off of any UT and you can see that with a little bit, I'm gonna put a little bit of pressure on there. And actually, I can just go like this over the whole thing. I don't actually need to do just the flower. Ha! So also, the ink will come off. So that's another really cool thing. Oh, but look, it must not be totally dry. But um, it does resist. So that is absolutely cool to know. All right. 
That makes me incredibly happy. So let's do something with this. I've kind of been playing around, and I know I haven't done an Inspiration Wednesday in a while. Let me just make sure my pages are not stuck together over here because they are incredibly wet. Yeah, they're still kind of wet. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make sure this is totally dry. We'll come back and we'll just build something off of this. All right, so I've totally dried it now, and I've unstuck all the pages that were stuck together. So I will say what I really like is that this ink did stain, and it does have more of a watercolor effect. Um, kind of really a good contrast to the acrylic. So what I love to do with products is kind of test their limits, and that's kind of what this was all about. So I'm thinking, I'm not really sure, I mean, I love the way this looks. I could walk away from it right now and just be happy. So I'm thinking maybe I want to just put a little ink around the edges, and I'm just going to look for my vintage photo here. And I think I'm just going to take that and just go around the edges a little bit. Get some brown, get some earthy kind of neutral colors into there, just to kind of grunge it up a little bit. I could take my um, blending tool, but I find that that's, that's too easy. So get some kind of grunge look in there. I love, I know I don't like purple, but you know, I tend to see that as more magenta. Um, I'm trying to get this around the edge, but since this is a water-based product, I can actually take my finger with a little bit of water on it and blend it around the edge. It does soften it, but that's what it is. And then kind of, that's kind of good too. And I do like that magenta with the, I know, magenta, purple, whatever you want to call it, with the brown on it. And what actually is happening is that putting that ink on top, you're actually pushing that back. But what limits me is the fact that this is not a permanent ink. So I can't do a whole lot on top because it will, or wet layers on top, but I was kind of debating whether I liked it on the white. I think I might just let it dry um, on the white flowers. I kind of like how that does grunge it up. All right, so I had to cut another stamp and I didn't really like it. And then I thought, I'll take this one. This is this passion changes everything. And it kind of looks like it would fit perfectly in there. So now I just gotta hope that I get a good stamp off on it. So I'm using some archival. My Stazon is totally dried up. So I'm hoping my nice and juicy archival ink will keep it. It's just a permanent ink. And go. Ugh, could I have gotten a better stamp? I think not. So, uh, love that. Love the message. I love how um, the ink is kind of blended on top of the acrylic there. And you know what? The fact that I rolled over it with those spots actually kind of looks cool. Um, I'm thinking I might even go a step further and um, take some pastel and go in here. So I'm gonna go get that and I'll be back. So these are some pastel pencils by um, Stabilo and I recently just got these and I really love them. They're really cool because they'll blend with your finger um, and they're quite opaque. So I'm going to kind of just take, I know, isn't it pretty to see them all lined up like soldiers? So I'm just gonna move this over here and I'm thinking of going in with the similar color, like say this turquoise here and just going ahead and shading and I think I should zoom in on this so you could see. Just kind of go in there and give it some shadow. And you can see I can blend it, but I can still maintain that shadow there, which I love. So I'll just go ahead and do this. I'll time lapse it and you can see um, how I do. <laughs> and I can also wipe it off the um, UT. So that's another good thing. Could you also use oil pastel? I could probably take those out too and see how that works, but these are just fine or easier.
super subtle, but it does give it a nice shadow down there and helps to kind of draw the eye up to the top. And if, you know, of course, nothing's finished until I drop some India ink on it. So I'm thinking I might need a couple drops of black India ink to um, finish this sucker off. All right, so that's just a quick little page of me playing. Um, I just figured it would be fun to record it because this is what I would naturally do, just playing around with the media. Um, for the UT, if you've never heard of that term or you've never done that before, basically it's just embossing. You take embossing ink, stamp it with a stamp. I just happened to use one of my um, large uh, poppy stamps, stamped it, heat embossed it, maybe took the gun to it, turned the powder to a solid, and um, that's going to re resist the acrylic as well as these inks, which is just a really cool trick. Certainly you can do this on a tag if you didn't want to do it on a journal page. This is just an 8.5 by 11 moleskin. And again, this is a book that I just kind of play around and hack in. I want to try something new, but I thought I'd just kind of finish it off for you today. And again, that's just any stamp. And I was going to use another stamp, but it just seemed like it just fit in wherever that swirl of that ink came around. So, Or the zinc, I should say. All right, so... Um, Hope you enjoyed the little demo and my whole conversation with myself, trying to get it to work the way I wanted and finding out the differences, but I'm really happy with the results.